In this video, you are going to learn how to add a pair of enemies, one of which reveals a killer when it's touched, and then it's game over. Well, here we are. This is the last of the series of videos on how to make Pac-Man in Scratch. And what we're going to do to finish it off is we're going to be adding two new enemies, uh, one of which, when you touch them, it reveals a second enemy and that enemy is the killer and if we touch the killer it's game over. So in order to do this first of all let's start off by making our killer sprite and to do that we're going to make another ghost and so the easiest thing to do really uh, particularly if you're quite happy with the one you've already made is just duplicate your slowdown ghost. Okay and we're going to change its name so let's call it killer ghost and we want to change its appearance so that it's a different color so we can easily identify the killer. So go to costumes on your new duplicated killer one, choose your paint bucket tool and a new color. I'm gonna go for red, I think that's a good color for a killer and make sure you change that color on both costumes. So now we can see our killer is distinct from uh, the uh, slowdown enemy that we had before. Okay, so we have our killer ghost ready to go. So why don't you go and do the same and come back and I'll show you how we're going to move on from here. Wonderful, okay, well now that we've got our killer ghost uh, looking as we want them, we need to change their scripts uh, because at the moment it's got all the same scripting as our uh, slowdown ghost, which is obviously not quite right. So if we click on the scripts tab and we'll see the code that's pulled over from the uh, slowdown ghost because it's a duplicate of that. And we're just gonna make a few tweaks. So the first thing we want to do is change where it says show slowdown ghost, show forever. We're gonna change that and put a new message and it will be show killer ghost. So show killer ghost. Okay and we need to do that for each of these so show slow down ghost again becomes show killer ghost. In fact I didn't need to type this in a second time because we've already got it in the list. Um, there it is. This one becomes show killer ghost as well and Yep, when I receive show dots, show, but oh, we don't actually want to show, no, we can get rid of that one altogether because this um, killer ghost is not going to be shown just when we show all the dots and the rest of the maze. This is only going to be shown when we uh, run into another enemy, so we can get rid of that one. And the hide slowdown ghosts, that needs to change, that does need a new message and that needs to be hide killer ghost. Okay, so now we've made those changes to the names of the messages that are going to be communicating with this ghost. Um, there's just a couple of other things we want to change. Um, if this killer ghost touches Pac-Man, we don't want to change their speed, so we can pull all of that out and delete it. Um, instead, we're going to want to do a game over, but we'll come to that in a little moment. Um, and we also need to change the uh, movement of the ghost because as you can see at the moment it's moving in the same path of our enemy ghost which is okay but um, we might want to have it somewhere else so uh, but tell you what why don't you just take a moment and just do what I've done up to this point so you've changed the messages to be show killer ghost and hide killer ghost show killer ghost show killer ghost You've taken out uh, the scripts of what to happen when it touches Pac-Man, but you've left the forever loop and the if there. And at the moment, we've still got the old uh, movement, but we can adjust that in just a minute. Okay, so let's deal with the motion of this uh, ghost. So, the first thing we want to do is um, we need to change where it goes to initially. So let's just take this off for now and get rid of that. And let's put the ghost where we want it to start. So I'd like it to appear over here. And because I've moved it, 
my go to has updated so now I can drag that to a new place to begin. And we do want the forever loop, but we don't want any of those glides because they're all looking at the wrong places. So let's do as we've done before. We're going to move our ghost to its first destination on its glide. Uh, so I'm going to drag it down to there. Then I'm going to glide there and I'm going to make it quite quick. So I'm going to make three seconds to get there. Then my next stop on the tour is going to be, I think, here. So I move the ghost and then I put in the updated glide. And again, I'll give that um, two seconds maybe to get there. Then I wanted to go back here, so we pop another one in there, okay, and back up to maybe here, I'll put another one in there, and yeah, I can give that one second. Then I'm going to make it go across to here, then I wanted to go down to the bottom, and I'll give it two seconds to do that. Uh, then across to here for a second, back to here, slide that one in, back up to here again, and give that two seconds, uh, back across to here, and then back up to the starting point. Okay, uh, let's see how that looks. So if you double click on here, it will kick off this, this little bit of script and we can see what that looks like. So it goes down, goes across, comes back, goes back up, across, down, across, back up, across, back to a starting point and down again. That's great, I'm really happy with that. I think that's a nice, uh, a nice motion for that. Okay, um, there's one other thing we need to add for our enemy ghost and that is that we want him hidden when the game begins so the easiest way to do that is just simply to grab a when green flag is clicked hide because obviously we don't want the killer showing when the game begins we want the killer to show when we touch the um, sort of other enemy sprite that we're yet to create okay uh, take a moment then just to get your motion for your killer ghost right and then don't forget to add your when green flag is clicked hide uh, options there. Remember with this glide stuff it's really important you move the ghost to where you want them before you then drag on the glide okay because by moving it you're going to set the x and y values that are going to come into your glide block. Okay right have a go at that and I'll see you in a second. Brilliant, okay, we now need to make uh, some changes to our code so that it actually does cause a game over screen to um, appear when we hit the killer ghost. At the moment, we've got, it's, uh, this is our uh, little bit of code that's sensing if it's touching Pac-Man and it's not gonna do anything in response to touching Pac-Man. So let's make some room and let's pop something in here. And to make it nice and simple, all I'm going to do at this stage is we're going to broadcast a message. So when the killer ghost is touching Pac-Man, broadcast a message and it's going to be a new message. And this message is going to be game over. Okay. And when that message is sent, we now need the stage to receive that message and to respond to it. So once again, make your change, add broadcast and make a new message of game over and then we can move on to the stage. All right, so let's go and make some changes to the stage so that we can receive and respond to that game over signal that our killer is going to send. Um, so let's click on the stage. Now the first thing we're going to need is a new backdrop um, for our uh, game over screen. So it's very similar to the level complete one, um, but we just need it to say game over. So let's make a new backdrop. We'll give the backdrop a name, you can call it game over. And you can do whatever you wish with this. I'm going to fill mine in blue 
and I'm going to use again just because I like things to be consistent but it doesn't matter if they're not so much but I'm going to use game over let's make that nice and big and I'm going to add a little Pac-Man face as well um, into the middle with some sort of crossed out eyes to show that he ain't doing too well anymore. Here's a little tip, so I don't have to redraw that, I can just select and I can control C, control V to copy and paste and I can paste that in and let's give him a bit of an unhappy mouth. Oh dear, that man's not feeling too good. Okay, so uh, that's my game over screen and um, I'm ready to write the code that is going to change from the maze to game over. So we need to go to the scripts on the stage and we need to, what do we need to do? We need to grab a when I receive and we're going to change that to game over because that's what we're listening for. When I receive game over and this is where basically we need to just hide everything we've got. So broadcast, uh, hide the dots, we don't want them anymore. We don't want the killer ghost showing, so we hide him. We don't want the slow down one, so we hide that. We might have, it's possible the slow motion sign that we made might be showing, so we want to get rid of that. Um, and we want to switch the backdrop to game over. Okay, and once all of that is done, we can also grab a control and we can stop everything. Um, so, if you want to go and make those changes yourself now, so go and create yourself a new backdrop called Game Over and add a block of script to the stage that says when I receive Game Over, broadcast hide dots, broadcast hide killer ghost, broadcast hide slow down ghost, broadcast hide slow mo sign and then switch the backdrop to the Game Over and stop everything. Great stuff. Okay, now there's one little thing that would um, still be showing on our game if we were to run this. In fact, I can double click to show what I mean. Pac-Man is still showing. And the reason for that is we don't have a broadcast message that hides Pac-Man. Instead, Pac-Man has his own listeners and he's listening out for when level complete is, is broadcast, he needs to hide. Um, so what we could do is just duplicate this and have when I receive game over hide. Um, but to be honest, that's you know that's not the best way to program this. It does work, but it would be an awful lot neater if we did the same for Pac-Man as we do for all the other ones. So I'm going to change this to when I receive new message, and that message will be hide Pac-Man. I can spell Pac-Man. Hide Pac-Man, hide. Then we don't need two of these, we only need one. But I do need to change the bits of code that send that message to him. So they're all on the stage. And it's when I receive level complete, uh, we want to broadcast hide Pac-Man. Where's hide Pac-Man gone? There he is and we can add that also onto here. So when I receive game over, hide Pac-Man. Lovely, okay. Uh, if I double click this now, Pac-Man disappears. So that's good, so we know that's working. Okay, so again, why don't you go and make that quick change to yours so that Pac-Man has, when I receive hide Pac-Man, hide and change your stage so that when level complete is sent out, it broadcasts hide Pac-Man and also it broadcasts um, hide Pac-Man when game over is received. Well done, we are nearly at the end. All that's left for us now is to create our revealer sprite who is going to make our red killer sprite appear. Um, so for this we can again duplicate our sprite and we can edit this sprite and I'm going to call it revealer ghost and the revealer ghost I'm going to show and we want to change his costumes I'm going to make him like an orange color but you could do any color you like 
So I've got an orange one and I'm going to pop him down here and we need to tweak his scripts as well. So again, let's go back to his scripts and we don't want to do uh, when I receive show killer ghost. This one is going to appear when all the dots appear. So we can do show dots, when I receive show dots, uh, when I receive show dots, when I receive show dots. Um, we don't want him hidden when we press the green flag, so we can delete that one. And um, we also need to change when I receive hide killer ghost to hide dots. Okay, so he's going to disappear when all the dots disappear. Um, he's going to appear when all the dots appear. Okay, so why don't you go and make that quick change to your game now. So create a new sprite um, called Reveal a Ghost. Recolor based on um, just using the paint, bu bu uh, the paint bucket tool. Keep it simple. Then change the sprite's uh, script so that he appears when we show the dots and he moves when we show the dots and he starts sensing things when we show the dots and he hides himself when we hide the dots. Great, okay, um, we obviously need to change the behavior for this ghost. When touching Pac-Man, we don't want to broadcast game over, but we do want to broadcast show killer ghost. Okay, because that's going to trigger the, the, uh, the little event that the killer ghost is listening for, which is when I receive show killer ghost. So all of these are going to be kicked off when this sprite sends the message. Okay, so again, go and make that change on yours. Fantastic, and all that's waiting for us now is we need to change the motion of this one. So, I'm going to get rid of my go to and I'm going to get rid of my glides. Okay, and I'm going to place him where I want him. So, yep, down here is a nice place. Go to motion, and now I can grab go to, put my forever back up there, and I'm going to set my glide. So, the first place he's going to glide to is here, and I'm going to give him only two seconds to do it and then I'm going to make it just glide back to here. So it's a really simple motion, just back and forth. And again, give that two seconds to return. So he just goes back and forth quite quickly. Okay, and in theory, when I touch him, it should broadcast the show killer ghost's message, which should reveal our red killer. So let's give it a go. Let's start our game again and see what happens. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to run into the enemy. And it has indeed caused my killer ghost to appear and I touch my killer ghost and it's game over. And there we go, brilliant. Um, one thing we could do is we could get rid of these. So um, that's quite easy to do as well. All we need to do on the stage is say, when I receive game over, we can go to data and we can hide variable, uh, which ones do we want, hide variable score, and hide variable uh, dots remaining. In fact, actually, it might be quite nice to leave the score going, so um, why don't we just change that to dots remaining and actually keep the score showing, because you might want to know what your score was when you hit the game over. So, uh, go make those changes and test it, see if it works, and if it does, you have done everything in these videos. You've, uh, you've got some amazing skills demonstrated here. You've, you've created sprites, you've drawn things, you've got um, variables that are controlling the speed of Pac-Man and accounting, um, all the dots that are being eaten, you've done some sensing and some testing to see what speed Pac-Man should, should move at, we've got broadcast messaging between sprites. There's honestly, there's so many great skills going on in this game that you can be proud of and that you can show off to other people. So well done, and now, if you're up for it, you can do some extensions. <laughs>